You are now listening to WLS, the voice of Prairie Farmer, America's oldest farm paper, Chicago. of Johnson's Wax send you another stocko session of salubrious syncopation and self-starting situations with Rico Martelli's orchestra, Lynn Martin, the Johnson Merry Men, and Marion and Jim as those carefree concoctors of contagious comedy, Fibber McGee and Molly. We understand that Martelli and the Merry Men are about to melt the microphones with a masterly musical movement. Go on, Martelli, strike me pink. Well, it's certainly easy to listen to Martelli's sparkling music, and it's also easy for you to have floors that sparkle and gleam without one minute's work of rubbing or buffing. Use Johnson's Glow Coat, the remarkable easy-to-use floor polish made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. If I don't think I'm falling in love, strike me blue. If I don't think it's you, what's that? Da, 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 strike me brown. If you're not down from heaven above, strike me green. If I don't mean it too, I was shy a bit of all my but now I feel free. So free. There's no doubt you're going to bring out the talent in me. Strike me pink if I don't think I'm falling in love. Strike me blue if I don't think it's you. of the somewhere into the here, or from Studio E to Fibber McGee at 79 Wistful Vista, where our hero has started to fix a refractory doorbell. Where does that wire go from here, Molly? Down the wall and under the cellar stairs, McGee. Well, come on down and show me. There it goes, McGee, up on the ledge. Where? Up here? I don't feel nothing. McGee, look out for that mouse trap. Oh, oh. <laughs> fine time to tell a fella. What's the idea of putting a mouse trap where a fella can't see it? Here, take me out of it. Who? Take me out of it. Well, hold still. I'm sorry, McGee. There now. Huh. Shucks. I cut my finger off. Bad man. Aha. Uh-huh. And what your hand for now? Look. You see that there bear place into the wire? There's your trouble, Molly. That's why she won't ring. And what's the bear spot in the wire got to do with it? It's touching nothing that I can see. That don't make no difference. It's the insulation that holds the electricity into the wire. When the insulation is wore off, the juice leaks out. Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't know that, Molly. <laughs> Why, when I was into the signal corps over into France, repairing telegraph wires to headquarters, they used to call me Wonder McGee, the wire wizard of the World War. Oh. <laughs> Hand me the flyers, Molly. They're sticking in your belt, McGee. Oh, oh, yes. You see, I'll cut these here wires and tape them up again so they'll be insulated good. You see, all you got to do is give it a snip. Oh, McGee, what are you doing, for heaven's sake? Oh, yeah. Uh, 
You see that there flash of blue light, Molly? Did I see it? That means the wire is dead in the negative pole. <laughs> Gives the pink light when the positive wire is dead. I'll never forget the time I... <clears throat> oh! Are you hurt, McGee? Are you hurt? Oh. Oh. I guess not. Kind of knocked me back onto my heels, is all. Onto your heels? <laughs> Now, just hand me that there tape, Molly, and I'll have her tied up in a jiffy. Thanks. <laughs> You've tore off enough tape there to wrap up the Pacific cable, McGee. <laughs> I know. Man. I was never one of these here electricians to skimp onto my work. Let's see now. Positive, negative. You see, Molly, you always got to wind the tape from right to left, like this here. It's a well-known fact that electricity twists from right to left as it goes on the wire. So you got to be careful to keep it. There. There you are. All fixed. Let's go. Are you sure it's all right now, McGee? Am I? <laughs> Baby, when I fix them, they stay fixed. I know more about wires and pliers and tape than this here Signor Macaroni. <laughs> well, for once, McGee, you fixed something. Congratulations. Go on with you. When it comes to electricity, I'm the Amper's grandpa. <laughs> Where's the doorbell? Is that it up, oh, up over the stove there? It is that. You know what I'd like to do, Molly? What's that? I'd like to hitch the doorbell up to the radio so that we could ring the gong on them amateurs ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it, Molly? I said that. Ah, it ain't funny, McGee. Okay. <laughs> now, look, Molly. You go out onto the front porch and ring the bell while I stand here and see if it rings loud enough. All right. And then you can get to work and scrub the porch, McGee, while I darn it. No, <laughs> Oh, I had a doorbell that had the bum buzzer. I threw it away and got me another. You ringing it, Molly? I've rung it seven times, McGee. Well, try her again. All right. Now, what in the country? I wonder Well, how... McGee, did it ring? <clears throat> well, uh, not very loud, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> i got to do me some adjusting on it, I guess. You see, the coil is probably fouled with the condenser, which makes the hoop and superheterodyne co-equal to the resistance. Hey, Molly, what's the, where are you going? I'm going to call the hardware store and ask them to send an electric. Oh, shucks, Molly, I can fix it, I tell you. You don't have to call nobody else when I'm here. Let go the phone, McGee, let go. Your mind is made up. Hello? Hello, operator. Hello? Hello, operator? Hello, hello. McGee, huh? the phone's dead. The phone's dead? Why, well, shucks, that's funny. I just funny, cut... is it? Huh? You cut the phone wires instead of the doorbell wires. Oh. McGee, where are you going? Now, just to check up on whether you're using the easy glow coat way to keep your floors bright and shining, we're sending our little checker upper, Lynn Martin, to peek in your windows as she sings, I've Got to Pass Your House. Lynn Martin. It's six o'clock. My work is done. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. And now, a word or two about Johnson's glow coat. If your floors are... Well, now, Fibber, can't I get him one announcement without you gibbeting? Excuse me just a minute, Harpo, but... Harlow. Yeah, but listen, Harpo, I... Harlow. Harpo. Harlow. Hey there, control room. What's the matter? Now, there's a Harlow echo out here. You better take care of it. <laughs> listen, son. You know what rules they're going to use tomorrow night in the Lewis Bear fight? Why, the Marquis of Queensbury, as usual, I suppose. Nope. They're using Johnson's glow coat rules tomorrow night instead. Oh, glow coat rules? Yep. No rubbing, no buffing. Put them on the floor and polish them off like nothing to talk. <laughs> Come on, <Molly. laughs> Well, we're afraid Fibber has used up all the time for our commercial announcement, so we're going to forget it and present an unusual feature. It isn't often that the president of a big corporation makes a personal appearance before the microphone on his own radio program. And probably never before has the head of an important company brought you news of so spectacular and unusual an enterprise as that about which you will now hear. We have the honor and pleasure of introducing to you Mr. Herbert F. Johnson, Jr., president of S.C. Johnson & Son, Incorporated, who will tell you briefly of his forthcoming scientific expedition by airplane 
to the little-known regions of northeastern Brazil. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk for a minute to so many friends and customers of our company. After a year of careful planning, we expect to leave this country from Miami about the 1st of October in a twin-motored Sikorsky amphibian plane for northeastern Brazil. Our trip will, conti- uh, will consume about two months. It is primarily for the purpose of establishing closer contact with the only source of supply of the principal raw material used in the manufacture of Johnson's Wax and Glow Coat. Canuba Wax, a tough, long-wearing product of the Canuba palm tree from this arid section of Brazil, is used as a basic wax in our products, which many of you have used for years for preserving floors, furniture, and automobiles. The personnel of our expedition includes two pilots, our research chemist, our purchasing director, and Dr. B.E. Dahlgren, curator of botany of the Field Museum here in Chicago. Complete photographic equipment will be carried, as well as scientific equipment in the field laboratory. The plane carries a Pan American two-way radio set and all the latest safety devices. Gasoline supply bases have been established at five points in Brazil, and before our return, we expect to fly about 25,000 miles over regions where very few white men have ever been. We expect that our trip will not only yield important scientific data, but will specifically ensure a future supply of the highest grade canuba wax so that we can continue to manufacture better products for American housewives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. And I am sure that everybody listening in tonight will join with me in wishing you good luck and happy landing. Now Martelli and the Johnson Merrymen tip their top hats to Lynn Martin as they give us cheek to cheek. now, and we find Molly donning socks, while Fibber has apparently given up the doorbell fixing in favor of the afternoon paper. Fibber. Fibber. Maggie! Um, (laughs) Yes, my love. (laughs) Did you speak to me? I did that. Could I be interrupting your reading long enough to ask you, did you scrub the back porch like I told you? <clears throat> the back porch? Why, uh, <clears throat> you see, Molly, it kind of looked like rain, so, uh, well, shucks after all. I McGee, it... did you or did you not scrub the back porch? <laughs> I'm glad you asked me that, Molly. You see, the back did porch... You? No. <laughs> shucks. And always... is it more important to you, McGee, to sit there and read the paper than to have a clean house to live in? 
Is it, McGee? You betcha. What? I mean, of course not. <laughs> Say, who do you think will win the Bear Lewis fight tomorrow night, Molly? How should I know? Which one of them is Irish? <laughs> Neither one. Well, then what difference does it make? <laughs> now, about that back porch, McGee. I know, I know. I just want to finish the paper first, Molly. And... Hey, you know what's going to happen over there in Ethiopia? Listen, Molly, it's just like a card game. This here Selassie feller's got a spade flush, but the Italians has got the advantage. And why have they? On account of the deuces wild. (laughs) (laughs) You get it, Molly? (laughs) I says the Italians... Ah, it ain't funny, (laughs) McGee. Okay, but listen... I got this here easy opium thing all figured out. Oh, you have? Yep. You see, Molly, on account of the British holding control of the Suez Canal and the location of Gibraltar, what it is, there ain't any doubt that Spain, being just across the water, will get mad at France because Russia's trying to edge into China. That means, Molly, that Sweden and Norway, which is usually neutral, will have a tough time persuading Greece to let Poland and Austria keep the freedom of the sea. Which, if the Portuguese blockade goes on... Australia and Canada gets up onto their hind legs, and there they are. <laughs> Chucks, I don't know how Chico Slovakia is going to keep out of it myself. Maybe uh, we can ask the peace conference to send the ambassador over here to scrub our back porch, McGee. No, oh, Chuck Molly, I'll take care of that. Go see who's at the door, McGee. Who, me? Yes, you. But put your shoes on. Oh, I'm coming as fast as I can. I should untie these laces before I took them off. <laughs> there. Which door, Molly? The front door. Hurry, McGee. Okay, okay, okay. Well, how'd you do, ma'am? What can I do for you? How do you do? Are you Mr. McGee? You betcha. Is Mrs. McGee at home? Yep. Come right in, ma'am. Thank you. I didn't know whether there was anyone here or not. I rang and rang and rang the doorbell. The doorbell? Did you say you rung the doorbell? Yes. Looks <laughs> we must have didn't heard it. Then I heard voices, and I knew there must be someone here. Sure, we're both here. Well, come right in here, ma'am, and meet Molly. Hey, Molly! Oh, what is it? If it's another one of them nuisances. Hey. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> this here is Molly, uh, Mrs. McGee, ma'am. Molly, this here is, uh, uh, now don't tell me, let me guess. <laughs> You'll never guess. I'm Miss Witherspoon from the public library. Oh, well, now isn't that nice? McGee, huh? give the lady a chair, McGee. Sure, take any one, ma'am. There's... No, 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 not that one. Huh? No, no, take one of the others. <laughs> that one's got a leg busted that I got to fix when I get time to see. Hey, wait, don't, don't cut on that one either. <laughs> the spring's busted onto that one. <laughs> You're liable to get stabbed in the... McGee! <laughs> Upholstery. <laughs> you see, ma'am, uh, Miss Witherspoon, uh, we've just moved in a week or so ago, and we're not quite settled yet. Sure, it's nice of you to come and call so soon. Oh, not at all. I suppose you're both great readers. Who, us? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget what a time I had reading this here Less Miserable. And, ladies, and uh... Ladies around? Yes, that too. They're both good. Hi, <laughs> Mike. We'll both be glad when we're settled down and can drop in your library for some good books. Won't we, McGee? Huh? Oh, oh, oh you betcha, ma'am. I, um, I see you haven't unpacked your books yet. I don't blame you a bit. Shows you're real book lovers when you keep your big books up to unpack last so they won't get scuffed and scratched. Oh, my goodness. We wouldn't have anything happen to our books for the world, would we, McGee? Oh, I don't know, Molly. Shucks, another one of them is worth the pot. Did you say the doorbell was out of order, McGee? Huh? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, Miss Silverspoon here had to knock Miss on Miss Witherspoon. <laughs> Yeah. Shucks, ma'am, I can hardly wait for winter. Suppose I'll have time to drop into the library and get caught up on the my reading. Mm-hmm. I hope you got something there besides them sappy love stories. Where a feller takes six years of his life and three hours of your time to get up enough courage to kiss the gal on page 314. McGee. Ah, <laughs> oh, Miss Witherspoon, I can never get enough time for good books. Ah, long fella and... And uh, Robinson Crusoe and uh, <laughs> Shakespeare and all. Did you care for the painting of the shrew? Oh, dear, no. Sir, I leave all the wild animal stories for McGee. <laughs> <laughs> and how about GBS? GBS? 
Not so loud, ma'am. This is NBC. <laughs> oh, no, no. CBS. Shaw, you know. Oh, Shaw. Sure. <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. She's one of my favorites. <laughs> I'll never forget the time I was visiting my Uncle Mortimer. A great bookworm, Uncle Mort was. Worm, anyway. <laughs> what say, Molly? I remember, McGee. He was in the book business. Yep. A bookmaker. How interesting. A bookmaker. You bet. <laughs> you bet, and he covered it. Well, sir, I'll never forget the time Uncle Mort showed me through his library into his country house. You know where the Blink River is in Massachusetts, ma'am? The Blink River? Yes. No, not Blink the Blink Speaks really. Uh, Uncle Mort has him a country home built right on the banks of it. Homestead on the Blink, he called it. <laughs> you should have seen his library, with Withy. His uh, withered phone's you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, sir, Uncle Mort must have had two million volumes. My, that was a library, oh, wasn't it? Just that was just a week's reading for Uncle Mort. Well, sir, of these two million books, ma'am, one million was bound in the genuine cowhide which he kept on to the north side of the library. Them was history and philosophy and physicology and all heavy stuff. <laughs> on the other side of the library, he kept detective stories and fiction and love stories. Them was smaller books bound in cash. <laughs> no, in cash. <laughs> well, sir, one night whilst I was sleeping, I was woke up by a terrible commotion downstairs. Well, sir, I grabs me a gun, leaps into my slippers and bathrobe, and rushes down into the library for all that their noise was coming from. And you'll never guess the sight that met my gaze. What was that? Well, sir, I can't hardly believe it myself, Miss Ditherswoon. But there before my eyes, bumping across the floor, was all them little cast-bound books. <laughs> wagging their little fly leaves. <laughs> and what you suppose they was doing? Crawling over to join them big cowhide books. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was motherhood calling. <laughs> And wasn't no time at all before they was the calfskin book snuggled up to each cow book. <laughs> a calf and a cow and a calf and a cow. <laughs> Just like that. You the sight you ever hoped to see. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, ma'am, I've got to go out and scrub the back porch. <laughs> That must have been a circulating library of Fibber's uncle. And seeing that he had difficulties with both his cows and his calves, we'll ask Martelli and his Johnson Merriman to sympathize with Double Trouble. I got trouble, double trouble. What is this fool? With one such a headache, I had to be in the love with two. Two, 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 two. If I choose one, then I lose one. Such a business fool. I can talk with them, I can talk with them, I can walk with them, I can walk with them, he was born with them, he was soon with them, but I can't go on a honeymoon with them. That's my trouble, double trouble, I don't know what to do. Oh, crazy as a cuckoo, trying to be true to do.
a favor. I wish you'd just look down at your floors. Do they have a beautiful polish, or are they beginning to get dull and shabby? You can make them look like new again in a few minutes' time if you use Johnson's Glow Coat. This wonderful new liquid polish works like magic on linoleum or wood floors. Right before your eyes, it changes unattractive floors to bright, shining floors and saves you all the work of rubbing and buffing. Glow Coat dries in 20 minutes and shines as it dries without help from you. Once your floors and linoleum are protected with Glow Coat, they stay clean for weeks at a time. Dirt and dust can't stick to the beautiful, gleaming polish. By the way, your dealer is making a special offer right now. A can of glow coat and a long-handled applier at a saving of one-third the regular price. Be sure you see on the attractive yellow can the name Johnson's Glow Coat. you to be back with us next Monday evening when we'll again meet these happy householders, Fibber and Molly McGee. Remember, next week, it's one hour later than usual for those not living in a daylight savings zone. This is Harlow Wilcox saying hasta la vista at Wistful Vista. Good night. Little McGee and Molly come to you from our Chicago studios. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>